guys, what's going on? It's Ash here coming at you today in Clash Royale. Thank you for joining me today. We have another live top of ladder series. If you guys are enjoying the series, be sure to subscribe, but more importantly, click that bell button because you don't get notified on videos anymore unless you hit the bell. Anyway, guys, we are joined by Brazilian Pro, Takao, aka Raphael, aka S of Theseus today. We're going to talk about the deck he's playing and spectate him live in just a moment. Let's go ahead and hop into the first match. Alright guys, we are here in the first match right now against Coca and the deck that we were going to be highlighting today. You guys can see it below me here on the overlay and also, of course, just a reminder, all the deck links in all of my videos will always be, a lot of alls there, in the description below. So the deck is so strong, possibly the strongest version of kind of a minor poison. Uh, it's kind of like a hybrid between minor control and, and minor cycle, the way that way that he's going to be playing this at least. I've already watched him for about 10 live matches before this as he climbed up to where he is right now around 6,600 trophies uh, just to kind of get a feel for how he plays this deck before I brought it to you guys. Also, I wanted to get him as high in ladder as possible to bring you guys the content and he did really, really well. I think he went like 7-3. and three. Uh, So let's see if he can keep that win streak alive. And the beautiful thing about this deck is the E-Drag, guys. And we'll do play-by-play -play most of this video, but let me just kind of set the table this first match and tell you a little bit about the deck and how you're going to want to be playing it. Again, it's very controlly, so playing it very defensively oriented is going to be important to have success with this deck. However, there's one card that you can play rather aggressively, and that is the win condition, the minor. So you can send in that minor after a successful defense, as you would a minor cycle deck, and hopefully he'll be illustrating that here on these reap or on these live matches. So we're going against it looks like just a regular bridge spam deck. It might be actually the E-Drag version, which I shared on the channel a few days ago here, and we play an E-Drag of our own there to intercept that Inferno Dragon. So again, guys, we'll We'll get into the, the strategy tips for this deck as we cover more of these live matches. But for now, uh, suffice it to say, E-Drag is so strong. And, and it's really one reason that the E-Drag is super, super strong right now. And that is, and by the way, look at that Magic Archer. Had it been one tile to the left would have activated that King Tower. People still learning how to best defend against that Magic Archer. And probably Coca knows it there. Poison coming down, take care of that Magic Archer on the counter push. So things are looking really good about a minute or two and a half minutes almost into this first battle. So what was I saying? I was talking about the E-Drag. So this will probably be the last E-Drag video that I bring this season to you guys because I know a lot of you haven't either unlocked it or leveled it up yet. But when a deck is just this strong right now I saw Clash with Shane did a video a few days ago on this deck and he mentioned it was the number one uh, win percentage deck that we've seen in the game in quite a while and that still stands true guys and really illustrating it perfectly is that sequence that we just saw in the right lane you might want to go ahead and rewind and watch that but he basically the opponent Coca and that was a nice fireball by them too <laughs> the opponent there basically just unloaded in the right lane and an e-drag a royal ghost and a poison shut down probably a 12 plus elixir push from the opponent then again we spent 12 plus elixir defending it but he didn't even get to the tower i think we ended that match with both of our towers over uh 3k hp left so let's go ahead and hop into the next match and we'll continue talking about the deck all right guys into match number two here against oh we're going against bag who's actually been a guest here on the channel two or three times in the past one of uh one of my viewer favorite guests so bag usually runs three musketeers in giant so let's see if he's still running that right oh i guess not let's go ahead and give him a let's give him an emoji uh an emo excuse me uh why do i just call these emojis because i'm an old man that's why all right we'll give him that one give him a kiss right uh so this is going to be a good match here so bag looks like he's playing a uh a golem deck here which he does play beat down as well but when you see bag at least me on ladder i tend to think the three musketeer giant deck so he's going to come in with a bar barrel. We're going to answer with one of our own. Sending in the bar barrel into the Lumberjack Rage is actually a pretty good move. We're going to see how he handles, how uh, Takao, excuse me, handles this matchup going against a, a Golem deck where honestly this deck should dominate this matchup, at least in my opinion. Against any sort of beatdown deck, this is going to be really difficult to get past. Just the Electro Dragon. And, and I did want to finalize one kind of final point on the 
the Electro Dragon before we move on to the play-by-play -play here, guys. And it's just really the only unit in the game, obviously, that can stun lock uh, opposing troops from the air. And that's just so incredibly valuable. It's the only troop in the game that can stop a, a bandit mid-charge. It can stop not only the Prince and the Dark Prince and the Battle Ram, but also just fast-moving troops like the Lumberjack in a pinch. And it does really well against Swarm Troops. People, I saw that OJ did a tech video for the E-Drag in all the comments. You can go look. All the comments were like, this card sucks, this card needs to be buffed, you know, blah, 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 blah. Are they crazy? Are they crazy? This card is so good. It really is. I think, you know, the truth is so many people played it in random decks in draft and it feels underwhelming when you don't have a complimentary uh, deck along with it, right? Oftentimes. Sometimes you can get value out of the card. But I feel like that kind of... Every new dra new card they do in a draft challenge, I feel like it has kind of a tendency to appear a bit underwhelming, a bit lackluster to the players out there. I don't know if you guys agree with me there, but either way, check this out, guys. A big push in here for Bag, but man, he's handling it with ease here. A Royal Ghost, a Bar Barrel of his own, bats on the Baby Dragon, and that's going to take care of that push. Made it look really, really easy, even though it was an absolutely incredibly huge push coming in there for Bag. Uh, as we approach about 15 seconds here left in regulation we get a minor to the tower and i said guys off the bat in the beginning of this video you're going to be playing this deck rather aggressively poison comes down with the minor excuse me you're going to play the minor rather aggressively after a successful defensive sequence even if you don't have any remaining uh defensive troops alive you can send in that minor try to get some shift damage in between as the opponent tries to reload uh, so here we go, a big push coming in here again for uh, Raphael. I'm just going to call him Raphael because his name is T-I-C-O, and but he said it's pronounced Takao, and I always feel like I'm going to butcher that pronunciation. So he's like, dude, just call me Raphael. So I'm going to call him Raphael. By the way, I hope to get this video translated into Portuguese. Shout out to all my Brazilian viewers out there. If you guys are watching, I really appreciate it. Uh, so here we go, Poison coming down on that Night Witch. Night Witch is going to be disposed of, and the tower is going to fall all the way into the 700s. Minor actually is caught by that golem as well as the bats. That was a good golem there, essentially wasting uh, what five elixir there from Raphael. The lumberjack comes in front of the golem. That's going to be good and bad. You know, the good news is that the rage is going to be eaten up by that golem. If he gets to the tower, the death damage will be incredible, taking it down to around 1,200, 1,100, 10,000, 900 HP left. And all of a sudden, the minor poison. That was the nail in the coffin there, guys, against bag who is a really good player the minor poison takes out the night witch and more so than just the minor poison connection on the tower taking out that night witch really was the final uh the final blow there i guess the royal ghost technically was the final blow on that left tower so we're a quick 2-0 and in this video guys let's keep it rolling with the next match see you in a second all right, guys, time for match number three. That was a long wait in between. He's not even, I think he's top. I forgot to look where he was in the, in the uh, in trophies. The trophies take forever to update on the actual, uh, the clan selection screen. So I forgot to actually check in to see where he actually is right now. I'll try to remember to do that after this match. Either way, he goes in rather aggressively, seeing that the ice golem is out of hand uh, from the opponent there. I feel like this guy is really good. I don't know who's on the account or who plays this account uh, because I don't speak Chinese. But we saw the ice golem out of, look at the fire spirits, totally, totally annihilating that baby dragon. Fire Spirit is really, really good. One card that we haven't spoken of a lot in this deck. But anyway, we saw the opponent started the match there with an Ice Golem. So going in with Bats is actually a pretty decent play. Now, odds are they have another counter to the Bats. But still, you go in, you know the Ice Golem's out of cycle. At least you get the chip damage from the Miner and hopefully even more. So it was a good heads-up play to start out this, uh, this match. Uh, otherwise, as far as starting plays with this deck... You know, me personally, I like to let the opponent, in, in a deck like this, I really like to let the opponent make the first move. It's definitely not one of those decks that you're going to have a huge advantage if you wait till double elixir. But there's also not a lot of great cards for opening plays. Skarmy, look at this deck the opponent is playing. It's got to be Graveyard. It's got to be like the a new slash old version kind of mixed together of Splash Yard. It's going to be an interesting matchup. Of course, remember that Raphael's last card is Poison, so he's probably going to be saving that for 
or the graveyard. But surprisingly, even in a pinch, the E-Drag can be decent as a support card against graveyard. It's not going to be able to handle it all on its own, or even against the tanks, depending on what's happening. And I'm sure we'll see that illustrated throughout the rest of this matchup as we approach about 10, 5 seconds or so left in single elixir time. So the opponent starts to, to uh, reload with a bowler behind their king tower. We're going to go ahead and respond with a prince behind ours. And a skarmy comes down again. So we actually use our poison. Now you bet the opponent's probably going to go in with a graveyard here. They do lose the e-wiz. And there's the graveyard. We are ready for it though. We're going to try to block that bowler there at the bridge after we kill the ice golem, which we did. And that allows the princess tower to start targeting those skeletons. Again, guys, I feel like I've said this every single video I put out in the last five months, six months, but I'm sure I'm going to continue saying it because it's so important when facing a graveyard deck. But what you want to do is handle the tanks. You should really be worried about the tanks, more not letting them cross that bridge to tank for the graveyard because your best line of defense against a graveyard is truthfully the princess tower so just always keep that in mind and with this deck you have the prince and you have the e-drag your two of your five elixir epics in this deck to stop the opponent's troops dead dead set at that bridge before they cross it and this is exactly what we're talking about here guys we have the e-drag and the prince that's gonna kill the bowler it's gonna kill the e-wiz or very close to kill the e-wiz either way it prevents the opponent from getting off a graveyard there we're gonna use bats because we can't take damage uh from that baby dragon on to our tower they do have the advantage the damage advantage here that was a nice ice spirit and you're probably going to see Raphael every single time that he goes in for an offensive push now uh, especially with the prince he's probably going to be comboing it with royal giant or fire spirits for that skarmy because it can be a real hassle getting by that skarmy so a poison comes down from the opponent as we're about 30 40 seconds here into sudden death overtime this is a tough matchup here guys and again we get two bowlers and a baby giant we cannot let them cross the bridge there although the the opponent to be fair is actually low on elixir and we sent in that miner forcing them to have to use that e-wiz instead of using a graveyard and the e-drag again doing a, a great job here of kind of just just keeping those troops occupied there at the bridge and not letting them cross now we have a prince going opposite lane was that a mistake we'll see fire spirits just like we called comboed with the prince there taking care of that skarmy meanwhile we're just going to lean on our poison our bats and our e-drag in the left lane to play some defense against that graveyard however it does not turn out in anything super lucrative in the right lane, even though we do eventually get that prince to the tower. So this is going to be very, very interesting here. We have an E-drag. We only have a minute and 30 seconds left here. We're going in with a prince. We have the miner on the left tower. Baby dragon to defend. We're going to take down that bowler. We have bats on the right tower. We have a royal ghost coming in the right tower. A beautiful barbell predicting that skarmy. Can we get to this tower here? We take down the E-Drag, or excuse me, the E-Wiz. We have an E-Drag in the left lane. A lot going on in this match with the split lane pushes. I like Raphael's mindset here, switching lanes to the opposite lane as the graveyard user, which is generally a pretty good idea. When you're going against a graveyard deck, you know what they're trying to do. They're trying to defend against you and then pull off a, a big monster counter push, same lane. So oftentimes, especially if you can't break through for a lot, of damage always a great idea to switch lanes opposite lane against a graveyard deck so here we go guys again a royal ghost we talked about it every time we send in that prince we're going to be sending in the royal ghost or the fire spirits this time we send in the royal ghost because fire spirits would not hold up very long against a bowler we get that right tower though down to 592 now this is what i talked about again here guys we're using everything we can to stop those troops from prevent them from crossing the bridge here it goes. We actually use our bar barrel in the right lane, but that was actually a heads up play there because the E-Drag on his own is going to be able to handle the baby dragon and that bowler. And we get the miner down. 10 seconds left here. Almost 10 seconds. 9, 280. We need a miner poison on that right tower. Graveyard comes down from the opponent. Oh, come on. Do something. 3, 2, 1. No! Oh, man. That was so close, guys. Oh, jeez. Well, you know what, guys? I, I kind of hesitate sometimes on whether I should or shouldn't include these six-minute draws, but I do think, especially against a meta deck like that, I do think they are beneficial, even though there is no winner or no loser at the end of the day. So let's keep this video rolling. I'll come back at you guys in the next live match. All right, guys, here we go against uh, Bilal Palestina. 
uh, from Texas. Not <laughs> wouldn't expect that person to be from Texas, but hey, I like it. So let's see what they're facing here. Starting out with Spirit Goblins at the bridge here. Now I was talking about starting plays earlier in this video, and of course I didn't mention probably the most obvious starting play. Of course, I I'm inclined to wait for the opponent to make the first move, but I would use Fire Spirits at the bridge. Like that's a pretty safe play. Of course, you do have that Swarm counter out of hand, but as we talked about, uh, we do also have the E Drag and we also have the Poison. So it's not like we use the Fire Spirits in where SOL if they come at us with a bunch of swarm we still got that covered so here it goes cannon cart uh so interesting deck the opponent is playing here I wonder if it's a uh I don't know okay it's a minor poison deck I guess so I really like our minor uh control deck better than theirs uh we have a minion horde as well again we're not going to be worried at all about minion horde and I guess their last their last spell or their last card must be a spell it's got to be uh, poison or something, and I don't like that their deck doesn't have a zap uh, in there. I, I like the bar barrel, but not in a deck like that, because think about it. We're going to be able to respond with the bats or the fire spirits to anything the opponent is... Look at their deck, guys. Our fire spirits work against, like, half of his cards, and so, do so does our bats, and he has no response to that. He has no recourse to us just simply responding with bats. Like, look at this Look at this push right here. We'll use fire spirits or bats, right? And we have bats ready. And again, he has no zap. He has nothing that he can do there because he has bar barrel in that small spell slot. So I'm not a, a huge fan of his deck. He does have a cannon cart coming to the left. Uh, we're gonna respond with a prince. So always saving enough elixir to defend against, you know, anything that we, we need to, especially early on is really important in this deck. And the magic number is five. The magic number is five. You wanna make sure you're holding on to five elixir early on until you identify all all the cards in the opponent's deck so you can always rely on the prince or the e-wiz the two like really big hefty defensive stoppers in the deck that we're featuring today so a nice poison value there hitting the hitting the tower that we're already going after and taking care of that minion horde and again we're just able to respond with bats here and there's nothing he can do about it. He does get a couple bats to the tower. Uh, I don't even know if that resulted in any damage. But again, really just punishing the opponent here. And this is going to be a relatively easy match, you know. Even, I don't like the deck. I, did, have I mentioned that I don't like the deck that the opponent's playing here? I just don't like it, you know. It just, for me, I, I want that small, I want that zap in this deck. And I also want, uh... I don't know. I just don't love the deck. <laughs> so a, a cannon cart minion horde coming down the right, and that's fine. We have the poison ready for the minion horde. We also have the prince ready for that cannon cart. The miner does get on our left tower. They bar barrel against the royal ghost or, and the e drag push. We send in the miner to the left tower as well. Always aggressive with that miner chipping away at that left tower. And we do have the damage advantage going into sudden death overtime here, guys. Oh, by about 400 HP or so. And again, a cannon cart minion horde here at the bridge. But just like we said, guys, we're saving. Saving five elixir, we have the prince ready, we have the uh, the fire spirits ready, and we have the e dragon tow here. It's going to be a, a push that he's going to have to respond to in this right lane as well. And let's see if he goes in with an aggressive miner here in the left lane. Let's see what he does here. He's going to set up with the royal ghost first. The fireball comes down. There's our miner on the left tower. We send the poison too, and that was a really good predictive poison. And the reason it was was because look at the opponent's deck. We, you know, like, any, anything he's going to respond to our miner with, it's going to be poisonable, right? So, he used the Goblin Gang there, had to use Bats, had to use Minion Horde. We would have been able to respond to it with the Poison. So, here comes the Cannon Cart in the back. The, the Bridge Cannon Cart not working out for the opponent here, so he's going to try one in the back instead. We go in with the Miner, and look at that. Miner's just going to finish this game. Miner in the, the Poison's ready. There's the Poison. And the opponent could not respond because all they had in hand was a Miner of their own. or And they just used the Cannon Cart. So what could they use that wasn't Poisonable? Anyway, GG there. Very, very well played. Guys, let's check in with to see where he is right now. So he's currently 86th in the world at 66, 86 trophies. I'll come back. Let's do one more, guys. It's a long video, but I hope you guys enjoy it. Let's do one more. He's on a win streak, so let's let's keep this going. All right, guys, going into the final match, win or loss here, guys, against Mansoor from Gulf Nation. The best thing about these live videos is that we don't have to deal with our replays being at the top of the screen. That's the only reason I moved this channel in this direction. I kid, but, uh, you know, it is, a, it is an added benefit. So a bandit comes down, also a poison comes down. Of course, as we talked about, the E-Drag can stop the, the bandit mid-charge, but it doesn't work out there. Uh, you can, the E-Drag also uh, fires slowly enough to where the bandit can also evade and still go into a charge eventually. So he gets a lot 
of damage there, actually. About a thousand damage off our left tower to start things off there. Then he plays a P.E.K.K.A. in the back. We're going to go ahead and go in hard with the Miner in the Bats. He's going to zap the Bats, but that Miner alone is going to be able to get a lot of damage. Look at that. We're 700 damage plus 800 damage on that right tower just from a Miner Bats push. Now, how are we going to handle this? We have a Prince right in the middle. We have an E-Drag doing work against that P.E.K.K.A. The Prince is also going to do work against that P.E.K.K.A., taking it down to, oh, just about dead there. We're going to have to respond to this Royal Ghost, though. What do we even have? We have Bats ready. So, do they have Zap in hand? They apparently don't. And we're going to go in with a Royal Ghost. Royal Ghost does get to that left tower this time, taking that left tower down to 27-23. So, really smart defense early on here. We have Fire Spirits in hand. Are we going to use them? We are. So, Fire Spirits will take care of those minions. Now, we're going to have to be forced to use a defensive miner. A really good play there. A uh, Zap coming down from the opponent. He won't get the Bandit charge. Actually, he won't get any Bandit damage because we're going to respond with a Barbarian Barrel in that left lane. So now we have a solo Barbarian. He will get one swing on that tower if left unchecked, and he wasn't. The Royal Ghost finishes him off just at the very last second there, as we already are, again, two minutes into this match. Royal Ghost almost goes onto the tower there. We're going to respond with a Prince, and then we're going to uh, do some opposite lane pressure here, sending in the Royal Ghost in the uh, the right lane. Poison comes down. The P.E.K.K.A. did not pull that Royal Ghost. It's going to get us a ton of damage on that right tower, taking it down into 1246 HP. And again, against this P.E.K.K.A., we're going to be able to defend really well with this deck. Here it goes. It's the Miner and the Bar Barrel. We don't take down the Wiz or the Bandit. We should have Royal Ghost, though. Uh, in in hand and there it is real Ghost is gonna clean up very very nicely pull that P.E.K.K.A. back and look at that That could have been an incredibly difficult push for a lot of decks We're able to handle it and really mitigate the damage onto our left tower. Think about it guys That was a wizard that was a bandit that was a P.E.K.K.A uh, A lot of cards coming down in a Royal Ghost from the opponent and we're able to stop it really behind the power of the E Drag there and here comes a charging bandit gonna go right into those fire spirits That was a nice fire spirits there allowing that Prince to stay at at full health. He's going to charge right into that defensive miner. Wizard's going to clean up nicely. Meanwhile, we have a P.E.K.K.A. coming down the right lane. We're going to use a an E-Drag and Bats in the right. We're going to use a Prince in the left. The P.E.K.K.A. might get a swing on this tower. Indeed, she does. Uh, almost, I thought for a second she might get two there, but it looks like this one, we have Bar, we have Bar Barrel in hand for that wizard. He's not making it easy, Mansoor is really applying the pressure, doing a good job at the end of this match here, but I think we have it here. Minor Poison comes down. That's going to be GG, and Raphael knows it. So look at this, guys. This is a really good video. I think he had four wins and one tie, zero losses. Hope you guys enjoyed it as much as I did. Again, I will We'll take a break. Let's check in to see where he is right now. 73rd, 6707 trophies. So basically a, a 100 trophy gain in just this live video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Again, I will take a break from the maxed E-Drag, but keep in mind there's, you know, hundreds and hundreds of people at the top ladder who also have max E-Drag, but I know that you guys don't, and that's the main point. So I will be taking a break, but again, I had to share this deck with you guys. So huge shout out to Raphael, aka Takao, aka S of Theseus. His, uh, Stats and profile will be in the description below. Thanks to StatsReal.com. Guys, but again, so I had to share this deck with you guys. Really so. it. Huge shout out to Bren Chong, my YouTube partner. Check out his information as well. Guys, thank you. And as always, take care, guys.